so, so projectile motion is one specific example of two-dimensional motion. Okay? So like earlier this week or whenever it was last week, sometime we did that drone problem, right? Okay? Yeah. And you had to separate the motion, right? You were given one expression that described the horizontal motion, right? And one expression that described the vertical motion. And then based on that, you were able to figure everything out, right? Yeah. That's all projectile motion is. Okay? So hopefully from last year, you guys remember there are two, you really only need to know two things about projectiles in order to understand how they work. You've got to know one thing about what's happening with them horizontally, and you've got to know one thing about what's happening with them vertically. Okay? So when I take this duck and throw him up into the air like this, during the time he's in the air, what's true about his horizontal motion? It's constant. Okay, good. It's constant. Why? Well, what do we mean when we say that it's constant? What part of the velocity? Or, yeah. Yeah, what part of the motion is constant? The, the velocity, right? So, <laughs> right? Yeah. Doesn't that describe my horizontal position? Yes. It's just going to be whatever the horizontal velocity is times the time, right? Yeah. That's easy. All right, what about vertically? Is the vertical motion constant? No, because of acceleration. the acceleration of gravity, right? OK? So my vertical position should be, well, do we have an expression that describes an object's position at a time where acceleration is an issue? What do you got, Peter? Uh, isn't that like f a b plus b? Right? Oh, what did I forget? I forgot. Actually, I forgot two things. Good. This vi should be vi y, right? Because we're just interested in the vertical motion. All right? Plus, the thing might not have started out on the ground. All right? So, if you're like Carl and you're going, what? Here's the deal with this. This is just the generic equation, right? Remember, delta x is uh, x final minus x initial, right? Mm -hmm. So if you add the x initial, you get this, right? Follow? Yep. So that's all this equation is. So if you stand on top of a cliff and then throw a duck, then you've got some starting height, right? Because you've started out on top of this cliff, right? Make sense? OK, thank you, Peter. All right. Make sense? All right. So yes, this is a quick overview. I'm going to go back and fill in the blanks. But that's, this is it. So now it's exactly like the drone problem. OK? Yes? Good. Uh, so this is where you're struggling because you didn't do honors last year. One of the rules of projectiles, so when you throw something through the air, the only force on it is, uh, we always ignore air resistance because it's crazy complicated, for a little while. Gravity. Gravity, right? And so because gravity pulls down, it only affects the vertical motion. Because it doesn't change. It's constant. So you could put initial if you wanted, but it always stays the same. No, but like an xi. You could put i, sure. No, no, no like, I mean plus xi. Yeah, like oh, 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 I see what you're saying. I understand. I got gotcha. you. Uh, oops. I got gotcha. you. Uh, sure, you could do that. I was just assuming you were starting at a position of zero. So yes, I agree. I agree. My bad. I misunderstood what you're asking. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the V. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. Everybody good? <laughs> okay. So, so a couple of quick definitions. These are, you know, uh, whatever. A projectile is a thing you throw, right? It's got to be moving in the vertical plane, so we're always going to use our x and y axes. In general, I, this is what the, the, the textbook says. It's got to have some initial velocity. I don't know. It seems like a weird technicality to me. Um, but whatever. Um, uh, your acceleration is just going to be the acceleration of gravity, which is g. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, this is all pretty straightforward. Okay. So um, because the object is moving in two dimensions, if you want to describe the velocity at a given instant, you need to describe it in terms of the x motion and the y motion, right? X velocity and y velocity, right? Okay. Um, now, so to do that, so suppose you've got an object that's moving at some instant, right? So suppose here's your velocity at some instant, okay? Well, at that instant, that velocity is being directed at some angle theta above the horizontal. Good? And so you can use some simple trig to figure out what your vx is, right? It's just going to be v times the cosine of your angle. And your vertical velocity is just going to be v times the sine of your angle. So this is, that's all, you know, I think pretty straightforward. Yeah, are we good with that? I guess I shouldn't say that's straightforward and then ask you questions. But, but <laughs> do we have questions? Okay, cool. So, and then this statement down here uh, has just substituted a... Um, what was that? Oh, that was weird. Suction cup somewhere. Um, so, um... So this is just that equ those equations, but specific to the initial velocity. All right. So when you see theta naught, so the idea is if I launch a duck this way, is the duck going to always be going at this angle? No. So last year, I think we just used theta. This year, we're going to have to be more specific to understand that the angle changes as the thing is in flight. OK? So Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the angle that the projectile is moving at is going to change throughout time. So theta naught just means the angle that it's fired at. Cool? Problems? Okay, cool. Um, this little star here is really kind of at the crux of how you solve these projectile problems. You have to keep the horizontal and vertical motion separate from each other. Okay, because how fast you're going horizontal has absolutely nothing to do with how fast you're going vertically. Cool? All right. All right. Um, so basically what you're going to do when you solve the problems is you're going to split it up into two one-dimensional problems. You're going to observe the, x mo or the vertical motion, observe the x motion, and then kind of tie everything together. Um, this is a dumb check. Uh, take a second to look at the checkpoint. This should be... At a certain instant, a fly ball has a velocity of 25i minus 4.9j. Uh, has it passed the highest point? So what do you guys think? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, how come? Because the y velocity is negative. The y velocity is negative, right? So that's probably worth noting. So if you're looking at a projectile, So as it goes through the air, your horizontal velocity is constant, right? So here's your Vx, here's your Vx, here's your Vx, here's your Vx. All these little red arrows here represent Vx. Notice I'm drawing them all approximately the same length, right? Illustrating that your velocity horizontally is constant, right? Now, oops. Now, what about the Vy's, you guys? Are the Vy's constant? No. So as it's going up, you're going to have a Vy that's positive. As it goes up, that Vy gets smaller and smaller until negative. at the top your Vy is zero. Does that make sense? That is huge and very helpful. Okay. Please remember, when you throw a projectile up into the air, the vertical velocity at the top is zero. Does that mean the overall velocity is zero? No, because it's still moving horizontally, right, at whatever the Vx is. Good? All right. Then as it comes down, the vertical velocity becomes more negative. Etc. All right. And so the idea behind this checkpoint three is because your Vy is negative 4.9, it must be coming down. Cool? How, how long ago was it at the peak? There's this. Well, you can start at the same height. One second. One second. One second or half a second? Half a second. How quickly does the vertical velocity decrease? 
9.8 every second, right? Because the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8. And 4.9 is half of that, right? So it takes half of a second to get from a vertical velocity of 0 to negative 4.9. Follow? Everybody good? Carlos, is this making any sense to you? Are you good? Even having not had honors last year? Okay. Um, all right, so the book gives all these equations. They're basically modifications of equations we've seen. I don't love them. They're there if you want to look at them. Here's what I always remember. You're going to find the components of your velocity in a given instant using basic trig, right? And that's exactly what I just showed you a minute ago, right? If you know the velocity at a given instant, find the components using some basic trig. Follow? And then, horizontally, here are the things you need to know about the horizontal motion. Horizontally, your acceleration is zero. Horizontally, your velocity stays constant. So at any given instant, your horizontal velocity equals your initial horizontal velocity. Oops. OK? And then, your horizontal displacement is just Vx times t. Or your position at any given time is Vx times t plus your starting position, which was what Carlo was saying before. Any problems with that? Nope. Any questions? All right, I'm kind of trying to plow through this so we can actually get to an example. All right, vertically, the motion is a little bit more complicated, but it's still just those constant acceleration equations, right? Like when you're doing projectiles, I do not want to see calculus. Why? Because you don't need it. You don't need it. The acceleration's constant. All right? So everything here for projectiles should just be manipulating those linear constant acceleration equations. Good? All right? So vertically, here's the acceleration. At any given instant, my velocity is acceleration times time plus my starting velocity. So these are literally those linear equations just written out with a whole bunch of y's in there to indicate that it's vertical motion. Cool? Do I need to say more about that? Everybody good? Yes. All right. You guys are like, yes, 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 we know this. Get along. All right, all right. So nobody's feeling like I'm skimming too fast? No. Okay, cool. All right. So your book gives these two equations. I have not seen them used on the AP test at all. But I wanted to show them to you so you know they're out there. I believe that I wrote the homework so you don't need to use these equations. Okay? So I don't really need to memorize them. But <laughs> if there was ever a time, suppose you wanted to know, you know, like suppose you had a projectile and you wanted to know how high it was after it had gone horizontally, whatever, five meters. Okay? So there what you'd want is an expression that tells you what the vertical position is as a function of the horizontal position, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As opposed to as a function of time. Okay? So if you graph, so here's your projectile flying. Oh, no, I didn't do that. Here's a dude kicking a soccer ball. Cool? So this is the path that the projectile follows, right? All right? That path is called its trajectory. Okay, and it's a literal map of the motion. It doesn't show you the time, but it shows you when it has traveled horizontally this distance, it's vertically at this position, right? Okay, so you can manipulate these equations and these equations without too much work to derive this equation, okay? And notice, it tells you what the vertical position is as a function of the horizontal position, your starting velocity and the angle, right? Because once you launch it with some starting velocity, if you know the angle, that determines the path that it's going to follow, right? Follow? This assumes, real quick before I get your question, Maggie, this assumes you're starting at a vertical and horizontal position of zero. Oops. Cool? Maggie? Every, I don't mean this in a snarky way, every single projectile's problem has a changing theta. So why not the initial? 
OK, so here's the deal. So hypothetically, suppose let's go back to somebody kicking a soccer ball, right? You, you got to make good drawings, you guys, or you might as well just, might as well just go home. Drawings are a lot better than last year. OK. All right, so good. So, so when we talk about initial angle or theta naught, we're saying, all right, when he first kicked the ball, it was going this way, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's my V naught. Good. So at that instant, at that instant, there's a V naught X. Something I just wrote is silly. You don't need the naught because it's going to be constant. Here's my V naught Y. Here's my theta naught. Good? Very Now, as it goes through the air, that angle is going to always change. Do you see what I mean? I mean, that was true last year, too. OK? So you know, suppose I want to know what the, bo the ball is doing when it's right here. Oh, well, at that instant, it's kind of going this way, right, with some velocity, which we'll call vf for final. Cool? So at that instant, there's going to be a horizontal velocity Final, again, the F we don't need, right? There's going to be a VFY, a final vertical velocity, and some final angle. So it's like the tangent line to the X. And you guys are exactly right. You guys might remember when we did the, the drone problem, I said you can draw a line that's tangent to the path it follows, and that tells you the direction that it's moving in. And remember we did that problem that had the graph about the direction it was moving in, and I said you got to take the derivative to get the velocity. That's what this is illustrating. The velocity of the projectile at a given instant is dependent on the velocity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Did, have I answered your question? Yes. All right, I'm glad you asked that because I think I had not made that clear. Is everybody happy? Yes. Anybody unhappy? Uh, eventually. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, and then there's this other equation. So if you launch a projectile from the ground and want to know how far away it's going to land, that distance away that it lands is called the range. So when we talk about range, you're assuming that it starts and ends at the same height. So here's the equation for range. Again, you can derive this equation if you want by manipulating these equations here. It's not that bad. I'm not going to go through it. Again, I. I, I never use either of these two equations. This one I occasionally use, but almost never. And I really don't think you need it all on the AP test. So just know that it's there. You know what I mean? So like when you get to college, if you're like, oh, we need to find the projectile of this thing as a function of the position. You know what I mean? It, then you can do it. Good? All right, any questions? All right. Um, there is one more specific equation. This maximum height equation is another one of those basic equations. Um, so anyway, you can derive that. I, again, I've never seen that used on the test. OK, so any issues here? OK, cool. Oh, look, somebody left me a nice drawing. Um, OK, quick comment. This is something that came up. Um, what, we did a problem. I don't remember where it was. Somewhere last in, that, in, in the first chapter, there was a problem where a lot of you guys used g and you used negative 9.8 for g. Technically speaking, g is a physical constant in the same way that pi is a constant or Avogadro's number is a constant. g is a constant, and it is universally understood to be positive 9.8. Okay? So here's why I call attention to it. I, I almost never use it. I really like using acceleration. But so <laughs> suppose you throw a ball up into the air. Let's just do straight up into the air so we don't need to worry about our whys. Okay, So in that case, the velocity is a function of time. A lot of people would write it this way. They'd say, oh, well, it's vi minus gt. Whereas I would write it as right? Because this looks more like the, right? Because we learned vf equals vi plus at, right? And I like just remembering, oh, well, if my acceleration is negative, then I'm just adding a negative. 
This to me just seems, it seems like I'm memorizing extra stuff, right? Yes. So I never use this, but you will see it sometimes, okay? And I, as we go through the year, I'm eventually going to start using G a little bit more for reasons that will become apparent as we get there. But I want you to remember that anytime I'm using G, it is positive 9.8. And so if you want negative, you have to put the negative in front of the G yourself. Follow? Everybody good with that? All right, I really think this will be a bigger issue once we get to forces, but I just wanted to call attention to it now so that you, those of you that are using G don't continue to use it wrong any longer than you already have done. Follow? Okay. All right, uh, like I said before, we're always going to assume air resistance is negligible. Later on this year, we'll learn how to deal with air resistance. Uh, it's a pain in the neck, but once you learn how to do it, you're good because all the air resistance problems are the same. Um, these are dumb. I need to go back and rewrite these notes. Okay, uh, let's try a problem. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot to go back and correct this. All right, so uh, this particular basketball is being thrown by an ant. We're going to assume that the basketball starts on the ground. All right? So we have a very strong ant. You guys know ants are really strong, right? They can lift many times their weight. Can they lift a basketball? No, because basketballs don't weigh. Or, because it's an ant. All right, anyway. <laughs> um, so we're going to assume that it starts on the ground. I apologize. I meant to rewrite this. OK. So I'm going to give you guys a minute and see what you can do on your own. If you can solve it, awesome. If not, no big deal. All right? But see what you can do on your own. Yeah. Really impressive. Did he teach you guys how to do No. No. Nothing. What? Oh, is this your boy, Mariano? Oh. What? He said that you changed Yeah, the cone and the sphere and the box and the, and the waffles and the, yeah, the waffles. I'm so no, you guys didn't see the waffle one? All right, physics. Physics. Less waffle talk, more physics talk. So I guess I can pause the video so that nobody needs to. All right. So to solve this thing, step one, make a drawing. Please make sure, as please hear me say this, you guys, this is super important. As you make your drawings, if you draw a triangle, Every side of that triangle has to have the same units. Please, please, please don't do this. Uh, oops. Right? You can't do that, right? Because this is a velocity vector. This is a displacement vector. So don't do that. Clear? All right, cool. Real quick, for those of you at home, I changed the video, the problem up here. Sorry, it's I'm solving the one that I originally gave. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So here we go. Let's draw this thing. So uh, here's the hoop. What I know about the hoop is that it is three meters above the ground, and I know that the ball is being fired from the ground through some freakish freakiness, and somehow the ball goes straight through the hoop. So. Either, really, either it's still on its way up and it somehow goes up through the bottom, or more likely it drops down through the top like this. Good? <coughs> All right. So that's drawing number one. Let's call this delta y, yes? All right. Now, so here's my sort of trajectory drawing. Now let's think about the velocities. So, it, so at this point, the ball has a velocity of 20 meters a second at 40 degrees above the horizontal. So automatically, what should I do? Find the horizontal and vertical components, right? What should I label that bottom side that I just drew? Vx. Why isn't it Vox? It's constant. Good. So if you figure that out, it gives you 15.32 meters a second. This guy here, V. V-O-Y or V-I-Y, right? 
So that turns out to be 12.855. All right, let me pause there. Questions? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of all of the stuff I know horizontally, all of the stuff I know vertically. I guess it's probably worth noting what you're looking for. So specifically what I'm looking for here is how far did the ball go horizontally, right? That's what I'm trying to find. Okay? So let's write down all the stuff we know. I'm going to smallify this little drawing here because it's taking up too much valuable whiteboard space. Okay, so here we go. X. Here's what I know. I know that nothing. Oh, no, that's not true. I know the VX. Good? That's the only thing I know. Agreed? All right. Vertically. What do we know vertically? Let's see. We know our initial vertical velocity is 12.855. Sorry, I just changed from VOY to VIY. I like VIY better. And I'm trying to get in the habit of using O, but it's going to be a fighting battle because... All right, what else do we know about vertical? Acceleration. Oh, acceleration is negative 9.8 meters a second squared. I guess technically I also know AX is zero, right? Yep. I don't think you need to write that down every time, but it's a thing we know. All right, what else do we know vertically? Delta Y is three meters. Do I know the time? No. 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 Do I know the VFY? No. What I do know, though, is, so I don't know my VFY, and I don't know my time. What I do know is if I can find this time, that will correspond to over here these two times are the same, right? Yep. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So any questions? That's the hard part of these problems. All right. So now. It looks to me like I know more information vertically. Like here, I can't do delta x equals vx times t. And that's the only horizontal equation I've got, right? OK? So if you can't use that equation, then look at your vertical. So vertically, well, I see two ways to do this. Option one, use that equation to solve for t, which works, but But what? You do get two t's. Uh, you get a positive. Uh, yeah, you get two of them. Which of the two times will I want? The second one, right? Because they're both positive, right? Yeah, they will both be positive. Yeah, because there's two times when it hits three meters. So that leads me to wonder now if there are maybe two solutions. Oh, no, there are not. There are not. Why? It says the ball drops yeah. right through. I remember writing that that way now. So it's got to be coming down. Yes. Theoretically, you could shoot it up through the bottom. Yeah. <coughs> All right. If you get a basketball and through the bottom, yeah. Then, yeah. then you, have, you have official permission to punch me. <laughs> All right. So, but, but no, so here's the bigger issue. We could use this equation, but but you got to use the quadratic formula. Who likes the quadratic formula? Really? All right. OK. OK. So if you like the quadratic formula, by all means, please use this to find your time. I don't like it. So here's how I usually do this. I'm going to use this guy. 2 times vertical acceleration times vertical displacement equals VFY squared minus VIY squared. Does that equation look familiar? Yes. OK. What can I use it to find? The VFY, right? Does that make sense? No? Okay. Everybody good? All right. So use this equation, and you find out that your VFY is, to solve it, you take a square root. So you get plus or minus. 10.37 or 3.2? Two. I got 3.2, two, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Which one do I want, plus or minus? Minus, because drops. 
Good? We're not there yet. All right, is everybody good? I found my VFY. All right, now I can find my time. I know that A equals VF minus VI over T, right? So that means AY equals VFY minus VIY over T, right? So I can find my time. It's VFY minus VIY all over AY. So negative 10.32 minus, what was VIY? 12.9. Uh, 12.6. 12 12.855, 12 12.9, 12 cool. All over, what's my AG? Or AY? Negative 9.8. And so the time turns out to be 2.36 seconds. And if you used the quadratic formula, you would have gotten that in one step but one very large step. So I like this way better personally, but whatever. Sooner or later, you're going to have to find this VFY. So I can, this, I feel like it gives you more information along the way. Whatever, though. All right, everybody good? All right, so now what do we do? Now we can go back up here. Oh, I know how fast it's going horizontally. I know how long it's going horizontally. So now. Delta x equals vx times t, right? So our vx was 15.32 meters a second. We just discovered that it's in the air for 2.36 seconds. So that means we went 36.2 meters. Good? Yeah, I guess it is, isn't it? All right, finally, before the bell rings, how do we find the velocity as it enters the hoop? Well. As it enters the hoop, I know my Vx is 15.32. And a minute ago, I found my Vy. Negative 10.32, right? So now I can find my V just by doing Pythagorean theorem and some tricks. Light got my eyes. All right, questions, you guys? All right, so honestly, the, this section, like that's kind of it. The trick is just learning to manipulate the equations strategically. All right, so that's why there's two assignments on it. First one is due Monday, second one is due Thursday. See them at school Wednesday. Uh, no, because it's uh, testing for underclassmen.